Good evening. I'm, I'm Natalie Xu, Artistic Director of this festival. I welcome you to our second annual um, Young Artist Mini Recital. Um, as you probably, some of you remember Ian Ling. Uh, he first appeared um, here in the festival uh, was when he was seven. He played uh, twice uh, for our master classes. And last summer, um, he said, I want to play for you. I haven't heard him for a long, long time, and I was blown away by his curiosity, his passion of classical music. Not only he plays piano, but he composes, he plays violin, and he conducts. So <laughs> he's really a, a rare gift in this community. And uh, uh, today, he's going to play one of the most difficult and challenging um, piano repertoire. Uh, it's the uh, Schumann, uh, no, sorry, Schubert, sorry, Schubert Wonder Fantasy. And I want to welcome you, Ian Ling. Thank you, Natalie, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I've learned a lot in the past year and a half or so and learning from you, so thank you. You kind of resurrected my motivation for piano and you made, me, you made practicing a lot more fun for me, so I have to thank you a lot. You're kind of putting me down this path again, so thank you very much. Anyways, I'm very excited today to present to you Schubert's Wander Fantasy in C major. It is my favorite piece of all time right now. When you think of musical prodigies, you would probably think of Mozart and Mendelssohn, these kind of guys who got really famous when they were only not even 16 years old. Well, Mozart got famous when he was like five. But in my opinion, Schubert was the greatest musical prodigy to ever live. Um, unfortunately, though, he was very underappreciated for much of his life. Uh, he did not receive the same amount of attention like Mozart and Mendelssohn. He wasn't propelled to fame from a young age, even though he composed a crazy amount of works. Schubert had already composed hundreds and hundreds of works when he was only a teenager, but it was only in 1818 when he first got public recognition and he started selling and publishing his songs and he became known as a composer of songs. Unfortunately, most of his instrumental music was only published after he died, which is what we now mostly know him for. Uh, Schubert died younger than even Mozart, who was notorious for dying super young. Uh, Schubert died at the age of 31 in 1828. Despite this, though, he has left us with over 1,500 works, which is ridiculous. It's even more than Mozart, who had around 900, and Mendelssohn, 400 combined. So it really shows, uh, it really shows how quick Schubert worked. And even though he worked so quick, a lot of these 1,500 pieces are absolute masterpieces. And in my opinion, the Wander Fantasy is definitely one of those. And the Wander Fantasy was composed in 1822, and it was published the next year. Uh, the Wander Fantasy is based off of one of Schubert's most famous songs that he composed. It's called Der Wanderer, which means the wanderer, but in German. And he, this was a German song that's set to a poem, which is also called Der Wanderer. And in each movement of the fantasy, he takes uh, core material from the song and, and like changes it up in each movement in a different style, depending on the character, and it really helps tie the piece together and give it a good, strong sense of foundation. The Wander Fantasy, as Natalie mentioned, is also by far the most technically difficult piece composed by Schubert. It was so difficult that Schubert himself stopped in the fourth movement and said, the devil may play it, because he couldn't do it himself. Well, it's by far the most difficult piece I've ever learned. Well, as I mentioned before, it's definitely also my favorite. What makes the Wander Fantasy unique, though, is that though there are four clearly defined movements, each movement flows to the next without any breaks because Schubert writes these transitions. And I think it helps add to the epic nature of the piece, and it kind of takes the listener on this sort of journey through the life of this so-called wanderer, through all his obstacles and struggles. But there's triumph at the end of the piece, after all. The, the fantasy also inspired many other composers, but most famously Franz Liszt, who arranged a wander fantasy like three different ways, including a version for piano and orchestra. He was also deeply inspired by the wander fantasy's uh, construction in his famous piano sonata in B minor, which is widely regarded as one of his best works ever. Anyways, I am very happy to be presenting to you the wander fantasy. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. And thank you so much for coming this afternoon. Thank you.